Maddie loves podcast. Maddie loves podcast. Bonjour et bienvenue à un entre episode de Maddie loves podcast. Hello everyone, I'm Matt B. Simone. Joining me as always, Dr. Tom Lucas. That was, uh, hello, welcome to another episode of Maddie Loves Podcast in French, folks, if you didn't know. Trevion, Maddie, yeah. Trevion. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, being topical here because Tom is back with us on the podcast, and he has just gotten back from uh, France and Norway. Yeah, yeah, a little uh, west to north western European <laughs> tour, I guess, yeah. Um, so, Tom. We? Oui. We... <laughs> We've, we've talked a little bit about it, um, mm. you know, just on a on a on a previous phone conversation. But right. um, all in all, man, on a scale of like one to I don't know what ten is in French, but um, what what would you? It like is uh, dix. Dix. Actually, okay. So here, yeah. Oh. The, the 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 thing is, is that <laughs> for about six weeks before the trip, I uh, listened to French CDs in the car. Instead of music, okay, because I wanted to be able to negotiate the waters that was a foreign country. And here, here's the thing, though: right? French is not an easy language. It's not. It, it is beautiful in its in its way, but um, it turns out I'm really good at starting the conversation. I can go up and ask how much something is, where something is, say hello, little things, and then once they reply in French. I'm then stumped if I don't recognize what they say, which is probably about 99% of what they say. Right. So um, they see the look on my face, and then they shift into English. But I gave it a shot, man. I showed a little respect and tried to, you know, comment allez vous. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was okay, man. Everyone was really cool. The, o- the only rudeness uh, that I encountered was... I was checking out something in a, a storefront window, and these two teenage girls who had their hands in each other's butt pockets oh, were boy. walking side by side, and there wasn't enough sidewalk for them. Oh. And so instead of walking around me, they just barked at me to move oh. so they could continue. They're teenagers, so teenagers around the world are universally sure. self-absorbed. Assholes. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Uh, yeah. So, so they're like, so they're like, hey, I'm fucking blush in the Yeah. Were they smoking cigarettes underhanded? <laughs> I saw a little of that, but not much. We smoke our cigarettes underhanded. Uh, I'll tell you, man, they are smoking with no apologies in France, man. They don't. They they're fuck. They're loving yeah. cigarettes. They're just burning them down. There's no stigma that I saw. No, nope. you know. I imagine they're pretty expensive over there, and you can only buy them at these little stores. You can't get a cigarettes bodega. everywhere. Yes, they're called the tabac. The tabac. The, the tabac. Le tabac. Le tabac. So <laughs> uh, I did not go in one, but um, nor did I go into McDonald's. A lot of people have asked me, did I get a Royale with cheese? Oh. Which is really the play for a guy like me. Right, sure. You know, but I really, I decided, hey, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to at least be in local places, you know, as much as possible. So I didn't, I didn't go in. I'm sure it was there. I'm sure, yeah. You know. Were there even McDonald's saw, everywhere there? I only saw a couple. Yeah. And, uh. I saw a Burger King. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, and you know I didn't go in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was very cool. And uh, one of the things though uh, about Paris that I was really intrigued going is okay. So growing up, I'd read heavy metal and like Asterix, right? Comics and things like that. And European comics have always had a different feel. Sure. So I was like, oh man. If European comics have a different feel, then European comic stores must have a different feel. Right. I am sad to report that Parisian comic book stores look exactly like American oh, comic book stores. Damn. Exactly. Of course, everything's in French. Right, but that's awesome. Yeah. Though. yeah. So there's that. And I was looking for some kind of pop culture memorabilia that was in French. Years ago, I used to have a Clockwork Orange poster in French, L'Orange Mécanique. Right. And it was just so badass on the wall. And the only thing I could find was a Back to the Future t-shirt that had the Back to the Future uh, font, and it said Back to the Future in French instead. Oh, of awesome. And I'm like, yeah, but like Back to the Future, I, I 
I I love the film, but I don't live for the film. Right, right. You know, so it's like, hey, I don't want to waste my shekels on this. Uh -huh. You know, instead I found something that I haven't seen over here, which is a die-cast replica of the tank from Aliens 2 that they drive off the drop ship in. You got that? Yeah, I bought a replica <laughs> of that. Yeah. <laughs> like a French replica? Yeah, yeah, that. That's I awesome. thought that was cool. And then also, for, and you can peruse this while we're talking... Oh, okay, wow. so there was a. Uh, I'm showing Matt. Okay. There's a French comic series, uh, an anthology magazine called Titans that ran from, I think, the late 70s to the mid 90s. It's how they got their comic books. Yes, and w they had a license to reprint Marvel stories. Yes. And um, there's like, there's some interesting ads. There's an ad for. Uh, Some West the, the full Beta Ray Bill collection, and it says La Ballade de, you know, <laughs> Beta Ray Bill, you know, Beta Ray Bill wow. or de, and uh, there's you know there's a Warlock story in there. There's a, I think it's a uh, is that West, West Coast, Coast West Avengers. Coast Avengers story featuring Spider Man, and uh, there's an Excalibur story in there, oh, and uh, <laughs> I. Uh, you know, I was flipping through the the long boxes there, and I, I saw these, and I thought, well, this is kind of a neat relic. Absolutely. And so I really just bought it for the cover. Yeah. So if you look at the cover, it's got basically your Claremont X-Men all pounding on Xavier. And then Jean Grey in the Jean bottom Grey right in the corner. bottom right, because she's going... <laughs> and she's shrugging her shoulders. She's like, shrugging oh, her shoulders, well. and she's like, you know... Forget about it. It's another. <laughs> it's just another day as an X Man. Yeah, you know. Oopsies. Wow. It's so weird, and wow. uh, you know. Uh, yeah, Shadow it's kinda Shy. Cool. So this yeah. is ninety one. Yeah, uh, ninety three. Well, um, I think that's a preview on the back. the The magazine is dated on the on the bottom of the first page as ninety two. Oh, okay. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. In 1992, to me, is still kind of the 80s. Oh, yeah. I mean, and <laughs> too, you have to think about, like, the French comics, you know, they would get their stories a good year or two years after they printed them in, in, in the United States. Wow, this yeah. is neat. Though. And I did go into a bookshop with my wife, and she got, oh, the coolest thing. It's a French version of Alice in Wonderland, and uh, it's got all these... Um, sort of gatefold uh, art pieces that you open up and it's like Alice stuck inside the house, Alice falling down. And it's this really creepy sort of gothic looking artwork. Uh, it's a really amazing book. And, and in that story, they did have a lot of graphic novels and they were really sort of odd size book. They're not quite, they're, they're bigger than an American trade but not as big as, say, a library edition or something. They're hardcover, but they're thin. And uh, I thought about picking some up, but I really had to be careful of my traveling weight, like my luggage. Mm. You know, I didn't want to come home with 40 pounds of books, you know? Right, yeah. Um, but I saw some Yodorovsky, you know, and uh, some other heavy metal type people, and I saw a lot of um, books that were non-superhero comics. World War I stuff steampunk stuff some fantasy stuff and they were all about 11 bucks a piece what about jean gerard did you see any i, like, did, his I stuff? did not i did not I, I looked and of course i looked for like mobius yeah and right. stuff like that and i didn't really see it uh most of the most we went to this area in the latin quarter where there were like five comic book and slash geek toy stores within a block of each other. Wow. And my wife just went and got a coffee, and I just went from store ah. to store, you know? Right. And um, that's where I got the little aliens thing. Because I was like, okay, I've never seen... My rule is, like, when I go to a con or anything, is I'm only going to buy it if I've never seen it anywhere else. If I see it all over the place, I'm not going to buy it. You right, because so, more than likely, somebody else and somebody else and somebody else has it. Yeah, and it's just not special, you right. know. You got to choose. There's so many options for your cash, you know. So I'm like, well, what, you know, what don't I have? And I was like, I've never seen one of those. That's cool because uh, Aliens is, you know, an amazing film. One, oh, one, yeah. A great sci-fi film. Yeah. And I, I love military tech, too, like Aliens, Edge of Tomorrow, 
Like, I love seeing that, like, hard military tech. Right, right, right. Starship Troopers, no, because Starship Troopers looks like a game of laser tag, you know? Yeah. But um, when they do the hard military stuff, right. So that, I went to Shakespeare and Company, which is a very famous bookstore. It's famous for publishing James Joyce Ulysses. It was a place where Hemingway hung out while he was being an expat. It's not the original store. They've revived it in a different right. location, but it's basically still the same deal. And uh, and then we did, you know, the stuff. The Eiffel Tower, oh, the wow. Louvre, you know, all that. How was the Louvre? Well, the Louvre. Well, um, I always wanted Louvres on my uh, uh, Mercury LM7 back when I had that hatchback. That was a very 80s thing to have on your car, was a Louvre. But uh, anyway, so the deal with the Louvre is that the actual collection that they're sitting on is about half a million pieces of art, right? Okay. And stuff. Uh-huh. Um, they only have about 35,000 out at any given time. And it's said that if you were to spend 20 minutes with each thing, it would take you nine months around the clock to see everything in the museum. Wow. So we chose to see the oldest stuff they had so we went to see the egyptian antiquities and the roman and the greek stuff wow and i'm like you know let's go all the way back and uh that was really cool man the egyptian stuff was like, they have this sarcophagus collection that's like off the hook man it's like there must be like 50 of them in how there how far away are you from this shit like when you're walking through the line like how far away is this shit from oh it's standing? right it's right there if oh, okay. you if you were rude you could touch a lot of it oh shit okay i yeah. didn't know if it was like one of those things to where like you know you're walking and everything's about like 5 feet oh from yeah you. there are certain things though where there are crowds like it's pretty famous that if you go to see the mona lisa there's always a huge crowd of people around right. it. it's this tiny little postcard thing we didn't go that but we did unintentionally stumble across the Venus de Milo, right? And there was a sizable crowd around that. And I actually posted a picture on my Facebook of the crowd and the statue. Oh, you right. know, I was fine from where I was. I don't need to, like, look into its eyes or anything like so that. So wait, the Mona Lisa isn't, like, a big portrait? It's small? It's My understanding is it's small. It's like an 8 by 10 ten kind Get of thing. Out of here. Yeah, it's wow. not like some big panel art. I don't know the exact dimensions, but it is very small, which is why apparently you have to get to the museum very early to wait in line because you can't like look over people's shoulders and see it. Whereas the Venus de Milo towers over big. the room. Right. You know, and you you can see it from anywhere uh in the room. So yeah, so we'd like to go back and then the other thing, uh for sports fans, um the UAFA uh, Europe, you know, tournament was going on right while we were there, and uh, we we're staying right by the Eiffel Tower. Right by the Eiffel Tower is this huge park. It's a long park, and it goes from the Eiffel Tower to the military school. It always there. reminds me of like the um, uh, the space between the Lincoln Memorial and, and the, the Washington yeah, Monument. Right, like that area, like yeah. the, that. That little square just reminds me of, like, you know, Washington, D.C. and how that's Total, I totally see that. And uh, they opened the park to fans uh, to come in and watch the game, set up big monitors. Lay fans. And, yeah, and all that. And uh, some of the games were going on, on about a half an hour outside of the city at their big stadium. But um, So we were staying close. So every day the streets were filled with fans from different countries, depending on who was playing. And they're singing their songs. Sure. And they're wearing flags like capes. Yeah. And their faces are painted. And the vibe was just so cool. Yeah. You know, there was so much uh, energy. You know, and people everywhere, they see fans of the same country. They scream and yell. It's just, it was a very cool thing. And then at night when a team would win, you could hear the streets roaring and all that. And, I mean, that was a freebie. You know, we wow. totally got tossed a freebie on that. So pretty, pretty amazing stuff, man. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so you uh, you got to experience the Eiffel Tower. Um, uh, well, let's. What about the food, man? Let's oh. talk. Let's talk oh, a little yeah. bit about. Let's talk a little bit about the eats and uh, Gay Purry. What 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 did you partic- What did you enjoy? Did you hit anything up twice because it was so good the first oh, time? Oh yeah. No, no, no. We um, we uh, first of all the the hotel we stayed at, which was. Um, really nice and we've gotten a real deal on the room because we booked so long ago 
Uh, the hotel next to us was where all the teams and the VIPs from the tournament oh, okay. were staying. Oh, cool. And um, they just had this banging breakfast that you could go down and get and have like Nutella and croissants and uh. like real coffee. <laughs> like not Folgers. So what's BS the real coffee, coffee like? It's it like it punches you, uh. you know, in the face. Like it's just <laughs> dark and strong. And it was amazing, you know, and, and they had all kinds of other fresh food there and all that these funky breakfast sausages i don't think they like to really do them for themselves but they you know for the for the for tourists. guests yeah, yeah for guests and uh <laughs> but uh like most of the time when we were out you know they have these little brasseries little cafes everywhere and it's a really sort of standard deal there's like 10 tables inside and like 20 outside 20 outside and they all have, like, the same setup, you know, um, in terms of the f- floor layout. But they all have different food. So, you know, we just went to so we went to an Italian in one, and we went to a French one, and then we went to one that was a kind of a mix. And the food was always good. And um, my wife had some amazing, uh, like, mushroom penne and some other stuff, and... Um, the thing that's tricky is is that my wife's vegetarian, and uh, they Par- don't, Paris isn't really oriented towards that. Doesn't so, seem like they're health uh, yeah. health forward. <laughs> no, there. and uh, so we would walk past a lot of these, you know, brasseries, cafes, whatnot, and there wasn't a single option on the menu, you know. So we would pass those up. I'm sure mm-hmm. there were some places that had some. And I had duck one night that was really. Oh, pretty wow. amazing you know so um yeah and the funny thing is is pretty much it was always 50 bucks every time we sat down to eat it was 50 bucks $50. it didn't matter where we were it always ended up being like 50, 50 bucks. bucks huh yeah it was, it was yeah it was weird and uh you know it was cool you know it was cool and it was it was nice to get away i haven't been uh, aside from like mexico I haven't been, like, out of the country in, like, 25 years. Oh, know? wow. That's since I was, like, 19. Right, so. in Poland. Yeah, in Poland and, right. and all that. So it was nice. The thing was is that I pretty much used English the whole time, and I was kind of hoping to have to struggle more. I wanted to be more, it, you know. You know out- I didn't want it to be so easy. No, right. It was so easy everywhere we went, you know. Whereas when I was in Poland, that was a lot tougher. Mm-hmm. You know, it was so easy. I, I kind of felt a little cheap. Like when we went through Norway, everyone spoke English, and when we were in Copenhagen, everyone spoke English. Yeah. Like it wasn't even there wasn't even that. Oh, I, okay, I'll speak English for you thing. Right. Like it just they just open with English, and I was like, oh, well, nah, I guess I got to go to like Japan or something. Yeah. To get that kind of struggle. Yeah, I think Norway, they speak English more than uh, Norwegian or whatever it is they speak. I, it's Norwegian, and then they had another thing that is like... Um, it's not like Icelandic, is what it? What the, the people who live in the Lapland oh, speak. All right, yeah. But don't call them Laplanders. That's apparently derogatory. Oh. <laughs> so okay. they, All right. there's some kind of PC thing going on in Norway. All right, so so let's move then. We, we yeah, we've let's been move in a, we've been in a, we've been into Paris and then from Paris where did you go? So we we spent a night in Copenhagen and we went to this place called Tivoli in Copenhagen which is an amusement park that was built in like the mid 1800s and it's still <laughs> there and they just add to it. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so is there badass shit there? It's just looks really you know, it's really interesting looking. It's very, um, it's very surreal kind of place. Are you in the middle of a bunch of trees and everything? Well, there was trees, and then there was a stage that the front of it looked like a, a, a giant peacock, and they were doing this play on the stage where they were. It was like a tea party thing, and apparently the costumes were designed by the Queen of Denmark, <laughs> oh, right. who does it every year okay. for the show. And then there's, like, different rides that were built different times in the park. It's a small park in comparison to... Universal. Yeah, what we have here in Orlando, right. which is, you know, it's ridiculous. Stupid, yeah. Um, 
A total tangent, though. Have you seen the concept art for Star Wars Land that popped up online the other day? No. Ooh, just a full Millennium Falcon. In the middle, yeah. yeah in the middle. I figured. I figured. An Imperial now, uh, shuttle. Now, will it be able? Will you be able to uh, get up in there? Or? I hope so. I mean, I would hope you to. know. At least like a walk, th- yeah. walking th- tour or whatever. Yeah, walk through the months. I would just like. Ditch the tour and live there. You right, know? exactly. I'd hide no, in no. one of the pa- uh, the cargo holds like they did. Sir, you have to go. No, yeah. I'm good. Ah, you know, yeah, we're just gonna hang out yeah. down here. In this, <laughs> and this, you can put the put the lid back on. Yeah. We're just gonna sit down here for a little while. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to one of the gun turrets. Right, just chill. Right, exactly. And, and uh, it look it looks good. Unfortunately, it, it's gonna be a few more years before it's here. So, yeah, you know, but um. So we went to this park, and this park is a big part of Copenhagen. It's a big part of its history. I can't fully appreciate it, you know. Uh, but for people, the Copenhagers? Yeah. Copenhagen. I just hear Copenhagen, and I just picture just a bunch of, like, drunk Europeans. <laughs> right. Well, uh, they, they may have been drunk, but the thing about Copenhagen is bicycles, dude. The what? city is ruled by bicycles. Really? Yes, there are bike lanes that are as big as car lanes here, and they are everywhere all the time. And you have to stay frosty, man, or you're wow. going to get greased by a bicycle, right? So you drove. Um, <laughs> well, we 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 took um, we took a shuttle in, and uh, but you know, I after being okay now Paris driving in Paris. Um, I have great admiration for Parisian drivers because it is a total um, free for all. Okay, like they have the like the turnabout, like the one that's at the Arc de Triomphe. Uh, there are no, there are no lanes. There are no lines. It's just this huge. Just go for it. Huge roundabout that fits about ten cars wide. Okay, and you just go in. The mixing bowl. Yeah, and here's the thing, is that if you hesitate, you're screwed. You just cannot hesitate. If you just move forward, you you just, you'll be fine, okay? Wow. You just put, like, our cab, he just went in and cut across, like, eight lanes of people, and it just, it went, like, water, you know? But if you tap the brake or hesitate, you're going to get a lot of people hurt, right? So, I don't that was a little intimidating. I would need practice. Yeah. But um I could I could easily drive in in uh Denmark or Norway. It's right right-hand side of the road driving. It's it's just like here and uh it was no big big deal at all. So, you know, and and I could drive in France aside from maybe downtown Paris, you know, which, well, there's not really a downtown, but in the urban areas of Paris, I think it would be a lot trickier. Did you see any car chases? No, but you, there were lots of places where you could rent a Ferrari for half an hour. Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> How much? 50 bucks? Uh, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, everything's 50 bucks, even the prostitutes. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh... In all seriousness, I think it was about 150 euros for half an hour, which is, you know, just about 150 bucks. All right, so let's talk prostitutes. Um, <laughs> did you see any? I didn't. I didn't see any that I know of. Oh, okay. There may have been some people working. Right. You know, uh, what I remember when I was like 19 or 20, we went to Vienna for a weekend, and um, there was quite a lot of traffic on on the streets. Oh, yeah. And they all looked like supermodels. Wow. They didn't. They didn't look like you know someone that was living in desperate times or being trafficked. Oh, God. They looked like supermodels, and it did make you kind of wonder how much cash you had in your pocket. Right, right. Yeah, oh, but uh, I did not. I do not. Don't subscribe to these things. That's. I mean, I'm. And, I, uh, I'm going with total like American stereotypes of like Paris. Like, oh it's yeah, it's dirty. They drink their own pee. <laughs> yeah. They 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 smoke cigarettes underhanded, and the prostitutes <clears throat> are like hanging okay. off the walls. So first of all, I don't think we were in an area where there were the prostitutes. Okay, so right? you didn't see like you didn't see quote. <laughs> ghetto yeah for, uh, i did not see ghetto paris okay. right south side yeah right right so uh didn't see that uh saw a nice paris okay um it was uh for the most most part clean 
it wasn't sparkling. Like Vienna, what I remember of it was like you could eat off the sidewalks, you know? And the Paris is a city. It's like New York, you know? It's dirty like New York is dirty. You know, no more, uh, no less. And uh, um, the there was a lot of cigarette smoking. What was the other stereotype? Drinking their own pee. Oh, I didn't see any okay. of, of that. Okay. And everyone seemed to, to, to shower. Oh, good. So, yeah. Good. So, good. you know. Do they eat babies there? Uh, baby horses. Oh, baby horses. Yeah. Okay. Fe- fetal horses, Ew. actually. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh. uh, sorry, I think we just dropped listeners with that one. Oof. But, um, you know, something else that occurred to me, too, is that, you know, we used to be really tight with the French, man. Yeah. The French were our boys. And uh, they gave us the Statue of Liberty. Indeed. Um, you know, they helped us in the revolution. We helped them out. And everything was really cool until, like, the 1950s. And then things started getting weird. And it's a shame, you we know. Stop giving them money. Yeah. We, we have, um, you know, we, we have a lot of history with those folks. And uh, it's, a, it's a bummer that it's all got, gone kind of sour, you know, Joe America. With his freedom fries, which, by the way, French fries were an American invention. They were not, <laughs> you know. Yeah, did you ask for any freedom fries? Well, no. No, they're <clears throat> they're just called frites over there. And, you know, you can get them if you want, sure, with, with anything, you know. Uh... But, uh, yeah, so, and then Col- Copenhagen is, um, you know, uh, a cool city. Uh, a lot of, you know, you start getting, like, seeing that. Scandinavian architecture and design right. that they're famous for, right. you know, uh, the really clean, minimalist kind of stuff. We stayed in a hotel that was really famous for that. The Radisson Blue was designed by some guy in the 60s, I forget his name, who, uh, you know, was a big part of that aesthetic sure. being created. And then Norway, dude, Norway was all like epic. Vistas and fjords. I mean, I just hear like double bass on drums. Yeah. Like as soon as I would just step onto the land, I just want to just start blasting heavy metal and climb to the highest mountain I could possibly. Oh yeah, you know. Just raise a sword over my head or an axe or something. It's it's insane, and you like you go up to the top, and you're looking down, and the ship, the cruise ship, is like. On the top of, you're talking about the fjords. Yeah, you go on top of fjord, you look down, and we weren't even on the highest one, right? And the cruise, the cruise, because they're like 4,500 feet high, a lot of them. I I think we were like 1,200 feet up. Cruise ships like the side. Yeah, your thumb. You could cover it with your thumb, and you just see this. You don't even know how many miles out you're seeing. You don't know. You can't even, your brain can't even perceive the height. You know, (laughs) these things are over a mile high. Right. You know? Wow. And, uh... Uh, it's wild, wild, wild stuff. And I, I did buy a T-shirt, and it just has a half face of a, a Viking, and it just says Norge, which is Norwegian for Norway. It's and it's oh, it's got the sail of a Viking ship on it, super clean, nice, you know. And then they love their trolls there, dude. They're all about these trolls. Trolls are a big part of um, of Norway. What do you mean by like? You're well, about Philly, like gnarly trolls, or like with the pointy hat trolls. What? They are trolls that have really big noses. Oh yeah, right. They're ugly, cute, cute, ugly kind of thing. Okay, you know, take take one of those little troll toys with the hair or whatever, uh-huh. and uh, make its nose really big. Uh huh. And you're pretty much there. Okay. Okay. They don't all have that poofy hair. Right. You know, that's a doll thing, but. Um, trolls are a part of Norwegian folklore and legends and are as old as, as Norway itself. Wow. Well, that's a misnomer because Norway was actually, has only been its own country for a little over a hundred years, but, um, uh, from the olden times, three Billy Goat Scruff is a Norwegian folk tale. Okay. You know, so the trolls are like, uh, both a, a, a good luck symbol and something you want to have around, but it can also be the cause of mischief yeah, right. and mayhem. Right. You know, so they're a little um, fickle. They're scapegoats. Yeah. Poor you know, trolls. and uh, they're everywhere. You know, you can, you of course, bring any, any. The one thing, though, there's a market that they haven't tapped into, which is 
all the trolls that you can buy on the shelf are trolls doing like kind of old what I'll call old timey stuff. Pushing There's, a cart. Yeah, pushing a cart fishing. Yeah, right. You know, sitting under a tree. All these trolls. You know, all this stuff. I was looking for a troll with like a keyboard. A <laughs> troll with a laptop I would have brought home. Okay. Or, or holding its yeah, phone. Yeah, holding a phone or something like that. I'm sure you can find right? those. So um, I looked, man, in every souvenir store. I looked for a troll doing something modern, and Weird. I didn't really see that. And I think that they're, they're missing out. Yeah. Because there's people that would totally get one for their desk at work, you know? Oh, there's you like know a, people a have, office like, troll. there's probably a, a company that, that, that makes these, these, these ceramic trolls that people buy. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, I, I got the troll that's cooking. I got the troll that's... They only made 500 of these. It's a collector's <laughs> item. Right, right. This one has white hair. Yes. Trolls by Franklin Mint. <laughs> right, you know, and all that. So... I want. I was hoping to see more Viking stuff. Maybe you got to go to Sweden for that. Yeah, you know. I think Sweden is more, uh, more of more of that that Nordic lore. You'll find yeah. it more there with a bunch of people walking around with like the hammers. Yeah, 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 and yeah. All yeah. That stuff. Yeah. So uh, the Norway, you know, Norwegians. I think that you know, it's just it's it. There wasn't a lot. Of, there's not really any farmable land on those fjords and i think they were you know fishing a lot and yeah i don't think their numbers were very large i mean they had vikings for sure yeah. you know as a part of it but the we attended a lecture about vikings on the ship <clears throat> they had a, a traveling professor oh right who on. did a series of historical lectures for people we went to the viking one the word viking just means to go out right so anybody who would leave their farm We're and go Viking out, today. yeah, you go Viking. Right. Right? And then somehow it became a noun. Right. Right? But you go Viking. It's actually a verb. Huh. Viking. It's Viking. You go Viking. And so what these dudes would go do is during the, uh, the springtime they would plant, and then they would go out Viking, and then they would come home and harvest, and then they would go out Viking, and then the spring would come around again. And, and that's back yeah. to it again. Yeah, it's that's what they would story. do. So you, right. you veek half the time. You farm half the okay. time. So, yeah, you know, of course, you know, once they got deep into Europe and, and the Baltics and all that, a lot of dudes stayed. Mm -hmm. But originally that was the life cycle of a veeking I'm was you do that. So, wow. So that's what I got, man. That's what I got. Wow, man. So, all in all... Nice couple weeks away from sunny Florida, kind of to, I don't know. No, it was nice get weather. Your, get your mind kind of out of the norm. Yeah, you know, something I, I came to appreciate is that I really didn't have um, much access to the internet, which is something I was hoping. Yeah. And uh, I missed our anniversary week, though. I had to promote it post trip. Oh, yes, post -trip. yes, yes, yes. But, um, uh, I hadn't realized how much digital noise was in my life until mm. I got rid of it. You know, all the emails, all the posts, all the notifications, all the right. this, that, the other thing. Wow, you know, it was nice to not really live, you know, online at all. Yeah. You know, which is, you know, because of what we do, you know, we have to be online. It's a part of the deal, you know. Um did you, but there's something really attractive about hardly not being online at all. I gotta you, tell you. Well, I, you know, and I think here in about ten years, you know, it's kind of like records. People are gonna go all retro and be like, "Nah, man, I got rid of the internet. I'm going old world." You know, yeah, right? I, uh, I bought a set of encyclopedias. Right. <laughs> um, did uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, man, something to do with. What we were just talking. About. I was just gonna say I recommend to everybody, you oh, know, oh. to take a week off here and there. Yeah, if you can and get away, if your life allows it. Yeah. You know? Um. Well, how much uh, national United States news is international news over there? Oh well, um, that's I'm really interested in that. Like, I mean, were you were you finding out about like American celebrities who are starving their children at like the top story? 
No. Oh. No. Um, uh. Well, and there's a reason why, is when we got there, Brexit happened. Sure. It just happened. Oh, bang. Okay. So Brexit and European Union stuff was what it was all about. Okay. And um, also, too, um, I didn't hear the name Trump for two weeks. Amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, regardless, I, this is not a political show, and I'm not exposing any po- politics, but he's really clogging the mass consciousness. You know, like, Trump is everywhere. And um, don't watch the news for a week and, and let yourself, like, yeah. not have to hear his voice, not hear, have to hear people either praise him or criticize him. Yeah. Dude, dude is like, he's gotten way, getting way too much time in our lives, as any politician should not, you right. know. So, um, or anything, you know. Wow, Tildy's really got the pose going oh, on yeah, over man. there. Man. Oh yeah. She, well, okay. See, that's the that's the thing. You know, I didn't know if like while you were over there, if like you heard about like. Like, was, did Dallas happen when you were over there? Oh, uh, no, Dallas back? happened after I got right, home. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I didn't know because I was I was curious if if, if you were, were mm. over there around that period of time, if, like, you know. Well, every, look, everyone was it. really nice to me, but the fact is is that, uh, you know, most of the world looks at us and doesn't understand why we're so obsessed with guns. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, why all this, you know, horrible stuff happens so often in this country and um, we can't really be considered the dumbest when it comes to politics because the Brexit thing has turned out to be, you know, um, s- such a uh, <laughs> a mess. And um, uh, a lot of people voted and they didn't even know what they were voting for. Right. Because like, Google searches the next day were like, what does it mean to leave the, you know, Right, European I was just Union. putting two and two together. I was like, Brexit, British exit. That's yeah. what that means. And no, now no. there's Regrexit. <laughs> There's regrets, regrets it, it yeah. you know. So, I, you know, the, I, I don't even know about that. But the other thing too that was interesting is that so the big the big soccer tournaments going on in France, and of course uh, Paris was attacked not all that long ago, right. all over the place in the night. It was like a Tet Offensive, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, there were at least four different kinds of police that I saw. There were the gendarme, there were the regular cops, there you was see the, the army. Cops there. Yeah, and they're walking around with assault rifles. Oh, so we're everywhere. With guns. Well, they're police. Right, but our yeah. cops don't do that shit. No, but the thing is, is that they're tweaked, man. They're waiting for the next hit. Oh, you know. Man. Wow. And I actually felt safer with those guys. Wow. Because well, they're trained. Right. Okay, Bubba. May go to the range and practice with his AR-15, but you know these right. these men are trained, right, right, right. military trained, right. and uh, you know. So anyway, um, I understood why they were there. You know, um, that's still was, kind of intimidating. It, it is. I mean, you're like, I'm I'm not going to speak to that man. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to look weird or whatever. But. Um, they're, it's strange too, because like you know, little kids want to come up and they're talking to little kids. So what's they're the talking range to babies. Of fire on this son of a yeah, bitch. you know. Yeah, right. They're like you know, kids are like you know whatever. So, um, yeah, you know, the, some of my uh, friends and, and and family had you know really reinforced to be safe, be safe while you're there, kind of thing, and look out. But you know, they seem to really be quite vigilant. You cool. know. I, I think a lot of things happen in Europe because of proximity. It's sure. just easier to hit Paris yeah. or, or Germany or wherever, you know. It's op- there are a lot of open borders and See, stuff. See, I'm, I'm with Norm MacDonald. I'm still scared of Germany. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still scared, you know. Sure. They, you, you look back, a hundred, like he says, you go back, you know, and look back at what, you know, almost 100 years ago at, like, you know, how everything started and a whole country got more or less brainwashed with fear. Right, it's yeah. It's like, how can this not happen again sure. in this world today? You yeah, know? we might end up being that Germany, right. too. Right, we might be becoming Germany. Oh, Right, God. so I know. But um, the, the last thing I'll leave on that is back when I was in school in Poland, in Krakow, 
there was an air base right outside of town, and occasionally we'd run into uh, Polish airmen uh, or their airborne who wore these cool little red berets or whatever. And one night we met a few dudes and we were having some beers in the park, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the conversation got really serious because at the time the wall had just come down and Germany was going to reunify. Right, so this is 89, 90? I was there in 90, summer okay. 90, right? And then at the end of that summer, uh, Iraq invaded Kuwait. Right. So it was really Ugh. pretty eventful time yeah. to be out and about. Anyway, with all seriousness, one of them asked me, when Germany attacks us again, will you be our ally? Right. And yeah. uh, he was... Dead serious. Dead serious. Brother, I'm dead, telling dead, you, man. Dead, dead serious. I'm telling you, dude. They still yeah. are scared to death of Germany. Yes. Like, like I, I'm swear, like, you know how, like, Americans have these just dumbass conspiracy theories about, like, think about the, the like, French and yeah. the Polish, right, like, yeah. dumbass <laughs> conspiracy theories. Like, they're, the Nazis still exist. It's all underground. You know, right. they have an entire, like, you Any know, day now, base. Any day now, Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All these video games are just practice. Right. You know? Ready Player Castle One. Wolfenstein. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like Armada. yeah. Ready Player One, man. So, um, yeah, oh, I was cool. just seeing Armada over on the shelf. So, that is my travel log. Right? So we had Vikings and Geekdom and French comic book stores and bookstores and a little history and I gained nine pounds. I've lost six of it. So Wow. You know. Hell yeah. Yeah, so um gonna be eating very lean for a while. Uh no shenanigans. No shenanigans. And uh it's good, man. It's good to be back, and I'm looking forward to... What episode is this? This is 44. We're 44? Coming, to, coming to the end of 44 here. A little <clears throat> international flair with Tom Lucas. Right. This is um, like a Charles... Did Charles Bronson wheel the 44? That was... Death that Wish? Was, no, that was Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry's yeah. the 44. The Magnum. All right. So I this mean, is the Dirty Harry episode. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, how Bronson... many bullets did I shoot? <laughs> yeah. You feel lucky? Yeah. Well, I paraphrase. Yeah. I got the no. I got the no. <laughs> click. Yeah. yeah. Great flick. Um, actually, El Rey is running like Magnum Force. And... Oh, stop oh, it. Yeah. yeah I got to get back with El Rey, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, cool. Well, so Tom's back. And now, uh, you know, the, the, the regular sect of uh maddie loves podcast is just uh completed episode 44 the right. magnum uh edition um <laughs> right we will uh what are we gonna talk about next time right, matt so, well next time i think that this whole uh pokemon go craze is the is, sensation the sweep in the nation it is. It's, it's, and the globe it's a week old it's a, yeah on the day of recording um right now i've got this that we're recording now an episode before uh, which is a little potpourri deal, and then uh, 45 coming up that we're going to record next is, um, yeah, it's going to be uh, Pokemon. i got to get all these out, like, consecutive days, or this Pokemon Go episode is just going to be not topical in two weeks because right, well, half the people will stop playing it, I'm sure. Maybe we'll flip it. Whoa. Maybe maybe this is a little time travel happening right here. Pull like yeah. a Todd McFarlane back in like the early nineties with Spawn when he released issue fifteen before fourteen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So Well we shall see. Right. Um but anyway, this concludes yet another episode. Uh for Dr. Tom, I'm Matt D. Simone, and we will see you next time on Maddie Loves Podcast. Maddie Loves Podcast. Maddie Loves Podcast.